This is The Chris Abraham Show. Hey, this is the Chris Abraham Show. My name's Chris Abraham. You are being entertained in the background with one, two, three, four, five, five concurrent games of pickleball. So you will hear some and a lot of squeaky souls. And I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's not too annoying. This is the season four episode 26 of the Chris Abraham show. My name's Chris Abraham and as always we will explore different ways of saying things such as um uh what 26 or is it uh 26 or is it um, 26? Is it 26? I'm not sure. Anyway, today is about executive function and it is about my lack of it and how. Um, I think a lot of the crazy, like I was thinking about the last episode about my squalidness, the fact that I'm a feral honey badger and um, that I am a, 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 a feral dog. And I was, when I was doing research for the, for the notes that I just go to Google for, I realized that it is um, the direct result of having extreme diagnosed ADHD that I refuse to, tr to treat. And the reason why I don't treat it is going to be the subject of this podcast, which is um, I had, I was on uh, slow release Adderall as prescribed by my doctor. And it was, it totally eventually jekyll and hided me. I know one might say that it could be uh, an issue of requiring talk therapy or whatever. Or it could be the fact that I just had the wrong prescription. Um, or just general situational anxiety or depression. Um, or the fact that I, in fact, have anxiety disorder and the Adderall fed into that, which means that the treatment for ADHD is uh, counteracted by my tendency towards spiraling into anxiety. And, um, and then what I'm, how I'm treating myself now and it's not cliche, I do not smoke pot and I do not drink at all, but I've given myself a very small life because, and like I said, I have outsourced things like I get all of my laundry fluff and folded and I have a cleaning service come in every Tuesday. I will come back into a second and we'll discuss this more. Thanks for being here. Love you guys. Welcome back. This is Chris Abraham. This is the Chris Abraham Show, formerly known as Chris Cast. My name's Chris Abraham, and this is season four, episode Bente Seis. Bente Seis. Sex und Zwanzig. Vance Seis. Vance Seis. Anyway. 
God, my language skills are terrible. I do know 26, though. Um, yeah, I guess I'm so lucky that people just, even though I want to be considered an entrepreneur or a small businessman or a techie or a guru, everybody just calls me artistic temperament. But what it is, is it's... Um, it's lack of an executive function. I just do not have executive function. I was, on a Monday, I was just, so for example, my ex-girlfriend Betsy is extremely organized. It's so funny to see people who are so not ADHD, uh, who have extremely beautiful executive function, who live off their task lists, who are high performing, who are other people's assistants and executive and managers and so forth, and yet still play this ADHD game. Anyway, Betsy totally likes to talk about ADHD, but her executive function is beautiful. Like every night the place is spotless before we go to, we went to bed, and every Sunday night she would put on basically um, washerwoman wear and freaking take to the floor to the point where she was on her hands and knees, like buffeting the floor and completely making sure that Sunday night did not come to a conclusion without the place becoming spotless. And I was, and I, ever since I was a boy, my mom and dad used to call whenever they attempted to get me to clean my own room. Uh, they would call it stylizing time because what I would do is I would go into the room and I would be in my dirty, messed up, cluttery bedroom for an infinite amount of time. And I'd just be staring at my things and I'd be looking through old letters and I'd be reading books that I had read before. And the universe would expand to all the time in the universe. And while if Betsy or my friends from uh, 1970 Dogwood were to come to my house, or if um, Susie Connerly were to come to my house, it would just take them an hour to do what I basically block off 18 hours to do, which is to organize my apartment in preparation for a cleaning service. So this is deep, deep crazy, and I think my friends uh, realize that we've all normalized it. Uh, it's become a running tease, and I feel much less self-loathing by just embracing it and focusing on the things that I'm good at, which is just focusing on the work, focusing on the creative, focusing on the very simple few things that I can keep in the air, which is uh, five stars on Upwork, um, not disappointing my business partner, Dan, uh, making sure that all my deliverables are done to the best of their ability so I keep my five stars. Um, keeping 10,000 meters a day on my ERG and keeping that logged in a journal. And doing this podcast, which doesn't happen every day, even though I aim to do it every day. And uh, getting eight plus hours of actual sleep, not just in bedtime. And uh, making sure uh, that I have enough money for rent on the third of the month. That's it. It's really simple. I got rid of a car and a motorcycle. I have a bus pass, a metro pass. I have a pair of shoes. I have a bicycle I need to spend more time on. And I have a local cafe. And aside from that, my executive function is completely shot, and I need to keep the world very simple. Now, when I had a international company called Abraham Harrison, and, or when I worked at um, Edelman or New Media Strategies, I, was, I pursued treatment for this and found it in the form of Adderall. And it was amazing. It was amazing. It, uh, it was better. Oh, and, and the only way I treat it now is with a coffee addiction and a penchant for knowing that hydration is part of the problem. So maintaining fed, maintaining slept, actually maintaining my food, maintaining my sleep, 
and maintaining my coffee and maintaining my water consumption are the four things that I use. Other than that, I just try to keep my life extremely simple. Um, if I start freaking out, I know that freaking out will result in uh, an AFib, and I don't want AFib, and I don't want uh, arrhythmia, and I don't want um, a high pulse race rate. And um, now that I'm enjoying a carnivore diet, I uh, I feel like my head is even clearer. I feel like I it took me two weeks to transition, but now that I've transitioned, I feel much more clear-headed and much happier about everything. Um, what else? I don't know. That's it. I just have to tell you that, you know, it's funny to make fun and be playful about uh, ADHD or, or um, ADD, but it really is something, and that something is not just easily distracted or easily, it's, it, it could be teasingly talked about as being, look, look at the squirrel, or look, squirrel, look, squirrel, look, squirrel, but it's actually more defined by um, a complete crap in terms of executive function. Let me see if Google can help us. Hey Google, what is executive function? According to Wikipedia, in cognitive science and neuropsychology, executive functions are a set of cognitive processes that are necessary for the cognitive control of behavior, selecting and successfully monitoring behaviors that facilitate the attainment of chosen goals. Hey Google, how does ADHD affect uh, executive function? According to Abditude, problems with inhibition in someone with ADHD lead to impulsive actions. For example, problems with emotional regulation lead to inappropriate outbursts. Essentially, ADHD is an executive function deficit disorder, EFDD. The umbrella term, ADHD, is simply another way of referring to these issues. Hey Google, what is executive function disorder? According to Wikipedia, in cognitive science and neuropsychology, executive functions are a set of cognitive processes that are necessary for the cognitive control of behavior, selecting and successfully monitoring behaviors that facilitate the attainment of chosen goals. Hey Google, how is executive function uh, result in sloppiness or messiness? Here are some results from a search. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm sorry that it gave you the answer twice. I haven't quite figured out how to master it. I do need to normalize this recording, though, to make sure that that doesn't blast your eardrums. Um, so, that's it. Um, hey, Google, how do you address uh, ADHD executive function... According to Abditude, treatment options for executive dysfunction, cognitive behavioral therapy, used in combination with medication to treat any coexisting conditions like ADHD, is very effective at treating executive functioning deficits including problems with inhibition, emotion regulation, time management, and planning. Wow. That is me in a nutshell. I, uh, that's another thing uh, I forgot to talk about this because I think there's shame associated with it. As the ADHD progressed and as the stress upon me increased and as, uh, and the Adderall, I found like I became more and more of a rage monster, right? The extra energy and so forth. Um, you know, there were times when I was completely inappropriate screechy Chris, and uh, I'm a big guy with a big voice and a big attitude. And um, right now, I don't think I ever freak out about anything or about anybody anymore because I maintain 
actually too much control of my life. Like there's not a lot of loose ends, right? There's a lot of um, stressful people don't have to be a daily experience. You know, my mom passed away in 2012 and she was an extreme point of pressure and um, I'm not dating anybody, you know, I'm sort of living, like I said, a, a pretty manageable life. Now, the question is, is whether I need to transition to a larger life or whether I can be happy and contented with a very small life. Um, now that I do not have any outside forces that pity me or feel bad about me or try to encourage me to living my life more out loud, even if I did things like move back to Germany or move to Mexico City or try out um, Spain or give Oregon another try, my life can still be Metro Boulot Dodo and it can include cafe and digital nomad and walking around and taking photos and writing in my journal and writing on blogs. And those are very simple things. Like, honestly... I think that the biggest problem uh, when it came to Rage Monster Chris was frustration that my, my expectation of a life I wanted to live and my actual life that I was living was so far out of sync that I felt like I was in uh, a sort of hell. And now I can't tell you what kind of pleasure I'm having recording this completely self-indulgent podcast that nobody's listening to and watching a bunch of these are actually young young yuppies and they're completely multi-culty completely diverse that are playing pickleball during the week it's all you know white dudes and white ladies who are in their 50s and 60s and uh, early 70s who are playing you know the retired crowd but now these are mostly people in their 20s and 30s, um, people from all uh, the Asian people, South Asian people, East Asian people, uh, just all kinds of people from all over the board. Some white folks, some women, lots of baseball caps. Probably everybody is like Deloitte. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, Booz Allen, probably everybody here looks more like consultant than, than Govey. But, uh, yeah, I have some great pleasure just putting on a silly boonie hat, uh, strapping a fancy bag on my back, going from cafe to cafe. Right now I'm on a, a green Arlington County uh, picnic table all spread out in the sun like I said, with this amazing background of pickleball bliss happening in the background, which I hope is fun and not completely annoying to all y'all. Anyway, I'm going to come back with some contact info. Uh, let me know if you have any issues with regards to executive function or ADHD or your experience with Ritalin or Adderall or any other type of, you know, basically um, meth is basically uh, medicine, medical grade crystal meth. Um, let me know if you've had any negative effects or uh, one thing that I stopped both wise is cognitive therapy in addition to the medical uh, medicine therapy. But I seem to be pretty happy. Like, I'm even what I'm really good at now is putting up barriers. Like, if someone starts stressing me out, I give them a timeout. I don't tell them I'm giving them a timeout, but because I don't live with them and they're not under the same house or the same roof, um, giving them timeout just means not interacting them, not interacting with them uh, for a while. And, but that's. Uh, that's just medicine, you know? Anyway, uh, is, it, is it mentally unhealthy to chop down my world into a, a space where I have control and containment of my feelings and experiences? Or um, 
has that basically uh, excluded me into a sort of de facto fear-based um, ice flow um, that's uh, floating out to sea. You tell me, guys, uh, nobody has a very good concept of self, uh, and these last few years have been my exploration, out loud and shared. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Here comes the contact info. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. This is Chris Abraham. It is season four, episode 26. This is the contact info portion of the Chris Abraham show. You can reach me at chris at abraham.su. You can reach me at plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. You can reach me via text or phone call if we know each other. If we don't, you can try calendly.com slash chrisabraham slash 15. And then, of course, you have plus one two zero two three five two five zero five one. can reach me on Signal. And you can reach me on WhatsApp. And you can reach me on... Uh, Signal, WhatsApp, and Telegram. And it'd be super awesome to talk to you. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com. You can reach me at youtube.com slash chrisabraham. You can reach me at facebook.com slash chrisabraham, twitter.com slash chrisabraham, instagram.com slash chrisabraham. Uh, my... Uh, my Tumblr is chris-abraham.com. And what else? I don't know what else. Except there are some beautiful people playing pickleball. Who knew? What a smoke show. Um, you... I think that's it. Please reach out to me. Oh, I'm on anchor.fm slash chrisabraham. If you want to find my ground zero, but you can find me anywhere. I would really love a review. I would love five stars. I would love maximum stars. I would like a, uh, a subscribe. I would like a thumbs up. And I would love it if you would share it with your friends. Anyway, my sweet, beautiful babies. Uh, auf Wiedersehen. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta mañana. Tout à l'heure, tout va bien. Tout va bien is not. But it's tout à l'heure. Um, auf Wiedersehen. Choosy. Choose. Choose. Um, and I love you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.